Okay, let's go over a brief lesson for this etude by Brouwer. This is etude number one, and I'll be going through all of the different etudes, and if you need the sheet music, there's a link in the YouTube info section or on the website, so check that out. Um, you can get the whole book for really cheap now. Uh, it's great. So, the main thing in this piece is um, dynamics. I think dynamics are really, really important. So, you have kind of one phrase. And you have the same phrase, pretty much the same phrase, but just really drop down like an echo. So do your best to really make a contrast between those because although the bass line is kind of a melody in this one, um, I think the dynamics really um, shape the form of the piece and make sense of it as like a composition. It gives form to the piece and gives it more musical ideas um, because the the melody itself is is not like a like a strict melody necessarily. I mean, there is a melody in the bass, but um, adding those dynamics really makes the contrast that's necessary to understand the form and the phrasing of the piece. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is just in your left hand being very clear about what position you're in. So it opens up with first position playing. When I say position, I just mean one finger per fret. So this would be first position. This would be second position, third position, which implies kind of one finger per fret. And of course that rule is sometimes broken and to incorporate certain fingerings. So for example, in the first section, because you end up with this kind of E minor shape here, you'll want to use the fourth finger up here. That's why I'm using four, two, one, and then three, one there. It's just to incorporate that sustained sound, that smooth transition between those notes. Um, as you go on, when you go to the C sharp, I would recommend ending up in second position once more with your first finger at the second fret, using your third finger on the C sharp. Then it starts to move around, and if, if you're familiar, if you're like, if you're a crossover student and you've played lots of power chords, um, this will be very familiar to you, just like moving shapes around like this. And that's what this piece does. It uses that perfect fifth and, or a power chord in rock guitar lingo, but in, in music it'll be perfect fifth interval. And you'll just be moving that around. So the arm just moves the hand around to wherever you need it. That shape just gets transferred around. It's not that difficult actually. So starting at bar one, two, three, four, five, six or so, you start to really get that perfect fifth shape. And just sustain those notes. Echo. Bar two there. The reason we have to close the D and not play it as an open string is just because right afterwards you need to play that open D so you need a D that you can sustain through that whole bar so you need to play it on the fifth um, string at the fifth fret Sorry. and then you're in second position anyway for the next part there's that perfect fifth shape again, and we're just going to transfer it around at this point. So do your best to just maintain that shape and just let the arm move it around. Keep your thumb aligned with your second finger and just move it around, okay? Um, where are we? Um, not much to talk about here. essentially. Um, it's essentially like an ABA form to the piece. And then at the very end of the piece, it's just going to drift away. So nice and like just let it dissipate nicely. So it's a really cool piece and I think it's a, it's a great right hand exercise. You know, just lots of Accompaniment with those upper fingers. Don't let the I and M fingers be too loud. Just keep everything in the thumb where the accents are. So um, it's a good etude just for bringing out that thumb. It's also like a very interesting rhythm, right? Um, Brower is a Cuban composer. He often incorporates lots of Cuban 
um, and Caribbean kind of uh, rhythms into his pieces. So even though it's in four, one, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, the accented bass notes are going to be on a lot of off beats. So you'll just have to get used to that. But really, when you're learning the piece slowly, it's pretty straightforward. It's just um, guided by the eighth note. Forget, you can definitely practice it with the metronome. Um, just put the metronome on four. It might be a little bit confusing at first. But but you'll you'll eventually get very used to hearing the quarter beat. I think it's good to feel the quarter beat in this piece while also accenting those off beats. Gives you kind of this duality of four versus all the offbeat accents. That's what makes this music so fulfilling and so fun is just it's, it's full of these extra rhythms and dynamics and marcato, which you don't usually get in like your Terrega and stuff like that. So um, very exciting etudes. I'm going to try to do all of them, although that might take me like a couple of years because there's a lot of Brower etudes, but I'm going to do them in order um, as like a ongoing thing I'll do on the site. So continue to check in to thisiscospelguitar.com under the lessons page. That's where I'll be listing all of these etudes. Thanks very much.